PP, you're so cool. How do I become a dark ninja like you? Justin from Greeley, Colorado. Well, I don't know your age, Justin. So it's difficult for me to ascertain. But I started when I was 13. I started when I was 13, made my way up the ranks. I studied jujitsu, kenpo, karate, and kung fu, multiple schools, focusing on the way of the five animals. My sensei dubbed me the wise gorilla for my wisdom and devastating physical powers. After 15, the real work began. And I can't get into that as much as I'd like to. Top secret classified information, if you know what I mean. The modern day ninja uses technology to their advantage. Computers, cell phones, wireless access points, all of it. You think it's running around in a ninja suit, shooting blow dots, you're living in the past. Maybe they did that a thousand years ago. You go out there dressed up like some clown. They'll arrest you in about two seconds. You wear dark, non-reflective clothing. Don't have to be black. Good pair of sneakers. Concealable lead flashlights. Multiple IDs. You get the picture. And I never leave the house without my plastic. And I will not give away my cruising spots down in Charleston. It's like a guy giving away his best fishing spot. If you think he gave you the best spot, then I got a bridge I'd like to sell you. Give me a beer, will ya? The third time I've asked. I'm parched. But I can tell you one of my accomplishments before the age of 15. When I was 14 years old, on Halloween night, I smashed 146 pumpkins. All by myself on Halloween night. And those of you who know, know that you don't do that on Halloween night. The stupid ones go out and get caught on Halloween night. You go the night before or two nights before. You people think I'm making this up, huh? 146 pumpkins. The last one damn near gave me a hernia. 75 pounds. I lofted it over my head. Threw it down a hill. It tumbled over a wall. Hit the side of a house. And gently broke in half. I consider that a smash. Good enough in my book. You people think I'm making this stuff up, huh? I got emails about rebar and a crossbow. Obviously, some of you people never heard about number three rebar. If you don't think you can easily fashion it into a crossbow bolt, 
and I can't help you. 146 pumpkins on Halloween night when the cops are everywhere. Right here. Get me a beer there, will you? I'm parched. Jeff G. from Boulder writes, Do you think Orton is the answer? And can he lead us to a Super Bowl? Well, Jeff G. from Boulder, I'm glad you asked me this one. There's a bunch of goon balls out there saying we need to throw the deep ball. We ain't going to be nothing till we can throw the deep ball. If you can name me a receiver that we got who's over 6'3", and runs a 4'2", maybe you got a point. We don't got the receivers for it, and we don't need it. And all these people saying Kyle Orton can't throw the ball over 30 yards with accuracy. What the hell did we have last year, huh? Some great deep ball we had last year, huh? We haven't had the consistent deep ball since John Elway. It's a different offense, and we don't need it. We've been marching the field 90 yards. What more does this Orton have to do? He's proven it. He's a proven winner, and he's the guy. Barring any unforeseen roster changes, with this offense, Orton's the man, and he's proven it. You can look a gift horse in the mouth all you want. can kick the tires all you want. But he's a proven winner. And who would you rather have, huh? That guy. Or that guy, huh? To me, the choice is easy. You want the deep ball, you can go up there to Chicago and follow that Huck Dog around. His last two deep balls got picked off. And I don't want to hear this nonsense that Kyle Orton's just a product of his receivers and his offensive line. We had the same receivers and the same offensive line with that Jay Huck thought. And what did he do, huh? 19 interceptions? I don't know how many fumbles. Yes, Orton can get the job done. I think he will. We should be proud of this quarterback who wants to be here. And who seems like a regular guy instead of some GQ wannabe. I want to be here right now! C. Dillinger from Albuquerque, New Mexico writes, How did you know that J. Huckdort Cutler was no good and needed to go so early on? 
Well, that was a pretty easy one there, C. Dillinger. I saw this coming before a lot of people. They had rose-colored lenses on, looking at this Huck Dart's arm, thinking he was the next John Elway. He ain't John Elway. He's a poor man's Brett Favre. He don't protect the ball. And in this league, it's a killer. One of the reasons I knew that Josh McDaniels was going to get rid of that hook dog 